many, many leaders stumble in their leadership mm -hmm. because they have very poor self-awareness mm -hmm. because their perception of themselves is something different. Hello, everybody. Welcome to God Thing TV. I'm so excited. We have more guests here. It's been just an yeah. incredible round of guests this uh, this season on God Think TV. My name is Brooke, of course. I'm here with Pastor Bob, and we're here with Bishop Tony Miller all the way from Oklahoma City. Thank you so much for being here. I just can't wait to hear. We've been having just a little backstory for our viewers. Here at Word Life Fellowship, we've been having our Call from the Mountain Conference. It's our annual conference, and um, Bishop has been speaking here, and Pastor Les Bowling has been speaking here, and Pastor Les's wife, Sheila, and it's just been incredible. They've been kind of rocking our socks off, even if you didn't have socks on. Uh, they've managed <laughs> to, 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 to knock them off. So anyway, we're just really happy that you're here in Miwok Village from Oklahoma. Mm. It's pretty awesome, and Pastor Bob is going to kind of pick your brain a little bit about some mm, leadership, great. of course. Awesome. It's great to be in the metropolitan area of Miwok. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Deep in the heart of <laughs> Miwok. Well, first of all, uh, uh, Bishop, it's a, just an honor having you here. Uh, to kind of set the stage here, we're doing a series on leadership, mm -hmm. of which we understand you have some you know, well, understanding of so a little bit has been around the world 10,000 times in this, but um, <laughs> what the areas that we do approach leadership here is not just to church leadership, but actually to right. world leadership. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so hence God think versus mm -hmm. world thinking. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we want God's uh, you know, mind on, on leadership, mm -hmm. not just the world's mind, and we want to influence the world through this. So it's with great honor we uh, Thank you. welcome it's, you in here, joy, and, and uh, we're just going to go. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, it's really my delight to be here. I uh, First of all, what an incredible opportunity to be at Call from the Mountain Conference yeah. and to be back at, um, at Miwok. Um, I, I have a really strong vested interest in what happens here yeah. and very strong relationships. You know, Pastor Bob and um, Brooklyn, Brooke, we... Um, We've experienced incredible leadership truths over the last 25 years yeah. that, um, that are becoming very significant throughout the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. I remember when I started in 1992, I started a leadership development corporation called Destiny World. Yeah. And that was after having visited various nations where we would do large crusades and thousands of people would come to Christ. Yeah. And I'm standing on a platform one night watching literally thousands of people respond to the call. And the Holy Spirit asked me this question. He said, who are you turning these people over to? Mm -hmm. Because every person that walks down here has a destiny in their life that somebody's got to draw out of them. And I recognized that we were turning a harvest of souls over to people that had limited at best leadership skills in those mm -hmm. nations. And, you know, Maxwell has said and others have said that as goes yeah. leadership, so goes the right. people, right? Right. Because leadership is basically influence. And so the Lord just really put it in my heart that I was to, my master's degree is in organizational leadership, so my heart was to say, how do we strengthen leaders? What do, what do, they, what do we give them? I love this God think idea. I mean, that just really rings my bell. It's, it's, uh, it's incredible to think about it because I think there's, there's, there's three primary things that I think mm -hmm. leaders have to grasp. And the pr first one is perspective. Yeah. Perspective. Uh, the Bible would say it, would teach it from this angle that you have to have hindsight, insight, and foresight. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. That you don't understand the present if you don't know where you came from. Mm -hmm. So lots of times people want to be in leadership and pick up from the immediate and think they can take things forward. Yes. When in reality, if you don't have any understanding of where you've yeah. come mm -hmm. from, yeah. You can't understand the present. You know, and that's yeah. really true because I just started coming to our church mm -hmm. uh, about a year and a half ago. And since then, I've now, you know, been on staff here, which is, you know, just a grace of God. And now we're approaching our 50th. And in preparation for things that I'll be doing in my job here, I've been watching old footage of our church. I've been having conversations with our leaders about where we've come from because, you know, I don't know. Yeah. And it's... It's one giving me a better love 
for um, my church, right. but it's also given me a greater mm. passion and it's propelled me, I, th- I feel, at a greater acceleration mm-hmm. to where we're supposed to go or, you know, how I'm supposed to fulfill my role here because I've I've gone back to look at the where we've come from and where we, to where we are. And then now I have a better yeah. idea of mm. where we're supposed to go. Yeah, because your, your, your future is always in your present. Mm-hmm. Right. And you don't understand your present if you don't understand yeah. your past. Mm-hmm. So in dealing with perspective, you know, perspective has to do with, with not what your eyes see, mm-hmm. but with uh, what you understand about what your eyes see. Mm-hmm. So people that are going to move in leadership, it's not just what they see, it's what do you understand about what you see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My eyes don't tell me what I'm seeing. My eyes yeah. were created to catch light rays. Yeah. Right. So it passes through my lens into my, eventually into my optic yes. nerve and communicates to my brain. So in reality, that's why God think is so powerful for <laughs> business people, <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. spiritual leaders, you got it. even yeah. governmental leaders. Absolutely. That be watching Absolutely. This. That's why we have our map back here. Yeah. That, <laughs> that's why people think, well, you know, if I can just learn some leadership principles or if I can just get a vision. But the truth is, if I stand up as a leader, let's say I'm a corporate leader, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. looking at a company, I'm trying to move forward. Yes. I, I have to not just know what I'm looking at, I have to know what I understand about what I'm looking at. Yes. And that comes to me through how I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's some people that can be looking at the very thing they wanted and not mm. recognize it. Yeah. So wow. for a leader, perspective becomes incredible. Mm. You remember Joshua chapter 6, Joshua standing at the doors of the gates of, of Jericho. Yes. The Bible says the gates were shut up tight. Right. Nobody went out and nobody came in. And the angel of the Lord is standing there with him. Now, now remember, get the picture. Gates are shut up tight. Walled city, never been defeated. Nobody went in. Nobody came out. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I've given you the city. Locked up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you can't perceive what really was actually going on, if you'd have saw locked up doors, you'd have said, this ain't going to work. Right. We yeah. need to go home. Right. Yeah. But God was saying to Joshua, these locked up doors are a sign that they already know they're defeated mm. because they only lock down things they know they're about to lose. Yeah. Wow. If, yeah. They, if they weren't intimidated by you, they wouldn't have locked up the doors. Right. Yes. So perception becomes everything mm-hmm. in our lives. Yeah, it becomes our reality. Right. It just transforms. Yeah. That is just a tremendous. Uh, and, and percep- perception affects me as a leader, not only in what I see there, but it helps me in my own self-awareness. Yeah. Because many, many leaders stumble in their leadership mm-hmm. because they have very poor self-awareness mm-hmm. because their perception of themselves is something different. Because their mind has not been renewed to recognize the grace that's on their life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's where we take on the mind of Christ and we understand what God thinks. Right. And first, like you say, what he thinks towards us. Because the, one of the things that always struck me in the Bible and studying John, obviously, is Jesus knew, number one, who he was. That's right. And where he was going, his assignment, mm-hmm. you know, and what time he was in. He had the right perspective. Yeah. He got he got a he got a wor- he got a, a God think perspective of his life and the life of everyone around him. In fact, this week we had we had a whole host of leaders here on yes. the mountain yes. in a, what we call the gathering, and I shared with him out of that very passage of scripture that when huh. Jesus came up out of the waters of baptism, yes. he got the two things that every person that ever is going to make. A, a, an impact in leadership that every person needs, every yeah. person watching right. today Absolutely. needs. He first of all got identity. Yes, this is my yes. son. Yeah. Yes, he was given identity by heaven. Second of all, in whom I'm well pleased. Mm-hmm. So he got identity and affirmation, which yeah. is the basis for every leader to move forward. Right. Right. Wow. So yeah. I share this with the pastors. He was approved. Coming out of the waters of baptism, right? He was approved. Heaven said, we approve of you. Yes. Yes. (laughs) And then the Bible says in the next chapter, immediately, he was led of the Spirit into the wilderness. Right. Mm. So in the world system, it's you prove yourself to be approved. Wow. Ah. In the kingdom, you're approved, now go prove it. Yeah. 
love it. Mm -hmm. So we're validated by our Father in heaven. That's right. That's who our first. That's where your real identity is. That's a, because if yeah. not, there are leaders that are watching today who will tie their identity to their title, yep. their yes. privilege, yep. their yes. resources, yeah. and and when that becomes your identity, when that's gone, you don't know who you are. Right. Right. So You're when lost. You, when you know who <laughs> you are in your father's heart from the beginning. Yeah. Then you just continue to go live it out and prove it. And I think it's important for leaders to understand mm -hmm. that on their lives, and then also understand their role to create that mm -hmm. in a in a person that they're leading their life. Because you know, if you're a business leader, you're hiring people, or you're giving mm -hmm. people promotions, or moving them into their different jobs. And I, I've, what I've noticed is the best success in a lot of people has gone from not proving themselves first, and then being approved, which is the kind of the world way. And I never want to discourage people from going to college, but that's kind of the, the idea, the structure of you go to college to prove that you are worthy or you know something or you know how to complete something versus mm -hmm. somebody kind of seeing something else. You know, what if it was they're just good work ethic to volunteer, not doing something that you specifically had in mind for them, but their work ethic made you recognize something, their mm -hmm. potential, their calling on their life, mm -hmm. and then you approve them to do that thing. And then now you've just created this whole avenue for this person to grow, to reach their potential, to fulfill their purpose, to take their place, which we talked about in your message today. And, and now you're showing them what it's like to, to receive grace, you know, mm -hmm. by, because when you are a leader, you have given, you've been given authority to, to do this, to sprout this up in somebody else's life. And so, but to do that, you have to first recognize that it's mm -hmm. done it for you mm -hmm. by God, you know, and maybe you're under leaders too. And that's why I love this whole idea of leadership under a, in a godly way because it's entirely opposite of how the whole world thinks about leadership, mm -hmm. you know. And um, here we use the tag world leaders because we are called to be the leaders of the world. Mm -hmm. And... And we're going to be leading <laughs> yeah. the world in a way that looks so opposite and backwards to a, a lot of right. the people here. But then they're going to realize, but this is the way that it should be. Because this way is just and it's true. And it's just around love. I mean, yeah. how could you hate that? Well, actually, I have a question for Bishop also on that in this terms. And that is um, a lot of the way the world thinks is they need to protect their little piece of the ki their kingdom. And God thinking is so opposite of that. Mm -hmm. it, yes, you're going to hold on to things because it's your, you know, it's your stewardship aspect of your life with before God. But to be able to promote people, to be able to uh, influence people and grow them and allow them to grow and speak into their hearts and into their souls and in their minds of who their their what their greatness is and who they are. So I have a question for you: How do you do that with the leaders you train up? Well, that's that's a great question. Um, and in a nutshell, I, I saw this quote the other day. It says, don't think about how much power you have, but how many people you have empowered. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> because the reality is, is that my life will be measured by how many people I allowed and helped get to yeah. their place of purpose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, and, and the temptation to hold on to is basically born out of a, a really poor self-identity. Yes. Mm. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, and we're talking to leaders today. We we could be talking to yeah. a mother in a home is a leader. absolutely. Yeah. But if she yeah. don't know who she is, she'll compete with her teenage daughter. Right, mm -hmm. right, right? exactly that. If I don't know who I am, if I'm if I'm the supervisor at a job and I don't know who I am, I will automatically abuse, neglect, limit the people I'm leading because yes. I'm afraid they're going to take my job. They yes. become a threat. Yeah, to me. Yes. So, so out of that identity, I begin to set into a place. But I th this whole thing about empowerment, if you ask people for stuff, you uh, enslave uh, yourself. Yeah. If you ask people for information, you empower yourself. So the thing that I've talked to younger people about yeah. is if you go to somebody and say, give me a job, give me a position, give me a title. Uh-huh. Yeah. You're really enslaving yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. What you need to ask for, teach me how you did what you did. Mm -hmm. Show me how to do what I'm. How did How did that happen? Give yeah. me the information I need. Yeah. Because every time you do, you empower me. Works. And and, and and I was I was speaking to the um, the Oklahoma legislature, 
two years ago. For every year, for several years, I went in and spoke. They gave me an hour to speak to all of our government. And I was speaking to them about what do you do when you're the most powerful man in the room? Because the, the scriptures addresses that. Mm -hmm. In John 13, mm -hmm. uh, which is a little bit where we were at the, today, in John 13, Jesus, by, by the time he raises Lazarus from the dead, he is so popular that chapter 12 says that even the Greeks are coming saying, we want to meet Jesus. Right. We want to meet Jesus. He is, he's, he's the buzz of the city. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah. if he would have been in, in 2018, he'd been on TMZ. I mean, he would have, he'd have been everywhere. Right, everybody wanted to meet Jesus, and so when he finds out everybody wants to meet him, he looks, to, he turns to his disciples, and he prepares for the supper, right, in the upper room, and so he walks in. Watch this. This is pretty powerful to me. He walks in, and he is at that point in time the most powerful man in the city. Right. I don't mean spiritual power. I'm talking about public right. recognition, yeah. notoriety, etc. And here's what you do. If you're a very notable, recognizable leader, here's, here's, here's the program for how you help other people. He walks into the room. He takes off his robes. He puts on a towel. And he washes their feet. If you're really a strong leader, you always use your power to make other people better. Yeah. That's what leadership is all about. If I'm a leader and people leave me worse off than when they came, I didn't lead them properly. Right. Right. Jesus had two guys argue. I know we're almost out of time, but Jesus had oh. two guys two guys argue over who would be the greatest. When they got to dinner that night, Jesus said, what were y'all talking about? What was y'all arguing about on the road right, here today? Right. And they said, well, we was arguing over who was going to be the greatest. Who could sit on your right and who could sit on your left? And you know something, Pastor Bob? Brooke, Jesus never rebuked them for wanting to be great. Right. 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 That's a good point. He didn't say to them, that's bad motives. No. He said to them, you want to be great? Here's how you build greatness. Yes. Become the servant of all. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because the more you help other people get better, the more important, significant, and notorious your leadership will become. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's tremendous. You know, uh, like you said, we're getting close to time, but I, you know, I just want to thank you, first of all, because uh, yeah. you uh, bring an anointed word here. And I know the people even through the screen are going to know that and yeah. understand that. Uh, like we feel, you know, Holy Spirit here speaking. Right. And uh, just want to thank you. I want to thank, thank you. you for yielding. Thank and you. also, uh, we know that what you preach, you actually practice and mm -hmm. uh, yeah. that you're really have been, even though you have, you're a notable person, famous probably throughout most of the world, <clears throat> you serve the church, the body of Christ, leaders, business leaders, you serve them by giving, by empowering them to really grow. And we want to thank you for that uh, yes. from the bottom of our hearts. We yeah. really appreciate your time and your kindness for coming. Yeah. I want to speak that God, t God Think TV. This is brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I said it today in a luncheon for those of you that are watching, that weren't able to be here for the luncheon. This young lady oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> is incredible. Yep. <laughs> incredible. Thanks. And so I just want to celebrate what you're doing. Thank you. I think this is a great thing. Thank you. The Word of Life Fellowship is going to be a great thing yeah. for people throughout the world. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I have to thank all my pastors here and my leaders who you have graciously let me use this room, and they just kind of really entrusted me. And I got to thank Pastor Bob. I I wanted this to be Pastor Bob's show, and he was like, Brooke, I need you to be on it with me. And it's been it's become something even more incredible than I really yeah. anticipated. And now getting people like you and our other guests here, it's it's a really very humbling and I mean, the whole idea is just I want to reach everybody who's watching because awesome. my life a year and a half ago before right. I got saved was was going nowhere. Well, I know it, it wasn't going nowhere. I was going downhill very fast. And the Lord just came up and changed every ideology that I had. And now here I am and I feel like I'm thriving. And this is not even the tip of it. I just know it, you know. And 
I've read Bishop's book, uh, Journey to Significance. I recommend that. It's really yeah. great. It's it's up there with a lot of other good books that I've read that I just, I, I mean, the Bible is still the best one. <laughs> I'm sorry, but. <laughs> well, we just recommend Bishop. <laughs> yeah. you. No, We're really. Like, you guys, you got to follow him at, uh, at Tony yeah. Miller TV on Instagram, and you got to follow the Gate Church. I think on Instagram it's the Gate. Yeah. OKC and shoot you could go down to Oklahoma City and go down to the church oh, and yeah. see it for yourself yeah. <laughs> I've yet to go but hopefully I'll be there this spring <laughs> yep. anyway you guys thank you Pastor Bob yeah. for of course uh, being here this has been a tremendous episode of God Thing TV again thank you so much thank and for you. your kind words I'm very joy. humbled and don't forget, of course, though, you got to subscribe and you got to like this video if you are so grateful for Bishop and to share it. Yeah, and yeah. share it with your friends and leave comments and um, click the notification bell so you get notified because you don't want to miss. You don't know who's going to show up on the show. Right. It could be somebody that you would love to hear from. Follow God Thing TV on Instagram. Follow Word of Life CA on Instagram. You guys are so wonderful for sticking through 20 minutes with us. Yeah. I wow. love you guys and appreciate you so much. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. God bless.